What's up, YouTube? How's everybody doing? Um, this, I'm here with another video. Um, today I'm going to review the Rolling Stones Goat's Head Soup, released in 1973. Mm. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. That was rude. Released in 1973 on Rolling Stones Records. Um, produced by Jimmy Miller, and um, singles are known. Singles are Angie, Silver Train. Do do do, heartbreaker, and let's see other single. Move. Oh, Jesus. And dancing with Mr. D, but the main singles were Angie and Do do do, heart, heartbreaker. Okay, so members are Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Mick Taylor, Charlie Watts. And Bill Wyman, and basically it was on Rolling Stones records. Okay, I'm sorry if I look kind of tired. I just really got off of work, and I was like, I'm just gonna get this review over with because I've been promising myself this week to do this review. So after the release, oh by the way, in case you guys don't know who the Rolling Stones are, check out my reviews on Tattoo You, Beggar's Banquet, Let It Bleed, Sticky Fingers, and Exile on Main Street. So after the release of Exile on Main Street, um, they were finishing up their tour in 1972, and that tour kind of like the, that tour and like Keith Richards' drug arrest from France, it kind of got the Rolling Stones banned in a certain country, such as like I believe China and Australia, and so. So then the Stones had to relocate to Kingston, Jamaica because of the fact that due to the tax problem that they were facing, they were no longer allowed to say that Britain was like their main resident and stuff, stuff like that. And I think at that time, I think Jamaica had a certain rule about taxes and stuff like that. So that could have also been a factor too. I could be wrong. I, have to, I could be wrong about that, but I'm going to double check. And so... They recorded that album and it just came out. Goat's Head Soup. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Where do I start with this album? Let's start with the album cover. Hmm. So, the album cover is like a portrait of like Mick Jagger. I think dressed up as like a goat or some shit. And. I never liked that. <laughs> I never liked that album cover, Loki. I don't know why. I just never liked it. It just always struck me as odd. Like, he kind of looks like... If you guys seen that um PBS show, Between the Lions, it kind of reminds me of that and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, so... Ten songs. You know what I'm about to do. Dancing with Mr. D is the first song. Um, pretty. It was a good way to start the album. I'll give it that. Um, it's like a funk rock kind of ordeal and shit like that. Um, the vocal, the lyrics of the song has like a more darker tone. It's talking about like death and like getting ready to die and shit like that. And yeah, I felt like that was a dope album. You know, kind of. I could have definitely saw that in Exile on Main Street. Track number two, 100 years ago. Um, not a, not a favorite, right? They're not really one of my faves. Track number three, Coming Down Again. That's one of my favorite songs off this album. Um, that's the Keith Richards um, number and stuff like that. And he tells a story about a girl he was rocking at a time. And... And the girl who he was rocking at the time, um, she was dating Brian Jones. And Brian Jones, of course, you guys should know he's a member of the Rolling Stones and stuff like that. Well, yeah, he was a member. He died. And, and he was the original who made that sound. Let's just leave it at that. So, yeah, because you guys should know that the girlfriend, um, Anita Pellenberg, she left Brian for Keith Richards, so he kind of tells a story about that. So, very cool, interesting song right there. 
Then we have Do 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 Heartbreaker. Um, that song kind of took me a while to really get into, but re-listening the song now, I like the creativity of it. Like, so the lyric, the song tells like two stories and stuff like that. The first story is talking about, um, it's discussing police brutality when a officer um in New York City. He basically was, you know, out doing his work, patrol work and shit. And then he kills a boy and stuff like that because he mistook him for someone else. So the second story is about a 10-year-old girl who got into drugs and she dies and stuff like that in the alley and stuff. So it's kind of like one of, it's like a, a one of the political kind of songs and stuff like that. But it doesn't really get talked about. One thing for sure, I do love the horns in that fucking song. Very dope song. Next song, Angie. Um, that's kind of like a controversial song in in its own way because for for one, people don't really know exactly who they refer to as Angie. Like there was like a lot of theories. Like was it about David Bowie's first wife, Angela? Was it about heroin? You know, Keith Richards said it was, it reminded us based off his daughter, Dandelion Angela, and shit like that. Um, and then the label didn't, didn't really want that as a lead single because if you would listen to it, like all the lead singles from like the classic era, like Give Me Shelter, Brown Sugar, um, yeah, you know, it's like a up tempo rocker and shit like that. Angie was more like a soft ballad, like in a country inspired ballad. And I can understand the label not wanting to release that as a single and stuff like that. Well, they could have released, they said not as a lead single. I couldn't understand why they didn't want to do that and shit like that. But other than that, pretty interesting song. Another song um it's like a fan favorite when it comes to rolling stone heads and shit then we have um silver train um that song was okay did not really too fond of that hold on a second yeah then um really gonna get to get to hide your love um pretty dope song right there love like one this is like a very soulful rock kind of ordeal and shit like that and then we get to winter in my opinion, the best song off this album, in my opinion. Um, and this is another one that kind of grew on me over, over a couple of listens because I like the instrumentation. Basically towards the end of the song where it's like Mick Taylor's guitar solo and the strings. It just took the song to like another plateau and shit like that. Very dope song. Um... Yeah, you know, very cool song like that. And the crazy thing about it, that was actually, according to, um, I think it was Mick, Mick Jagger who said that, that was actually the first song recorded off the album, and they kind of picked up the sound from that and shit like that. And so, yeah, you know, very good song. And you know the Rolling Stones, they're known to um leave out certain Of course, like any artist... Like, known to leave out certain songs and shit like that off the albums, you know. But y'all know what I'm about to say. There you have Can You Hear the Music. And, now, eh. and that last song is Star Star, which um originally is supposed to be called Star Fucker. But it's like another, like, one of those raunchy songs and stuff like that. And one thing for sure, I love um the rockability beat they use and stuff like that. Yeah, I found it clever how they you talked about sex acts and it's talking about fruit and shit like that. So, and that's all the songs of this album. Hmm. This album, in my opinion, mm, not as good. Not not one of the best albums, in my opinion. And there's a, a lot of reasons, like why, a lot of reasons why I say that. Reason number one. Is the sound of the album. Now don't get me wrong. Like. I like the fact that they're being more versatile. And stuff like that. But here's the thing like. It's like they try to do what they do with like Exile. Especially. 
Because XL, it combined like a lot of music, like it combined gospel, soul, country, um, you know, but at the same time, you could still, it's still like the blues was still like the main factor, and that's what I really got from that and shit like that, you know? Ghost Head Soup, it's like the sound was just more polished than usual and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong, the songwriting basically. The song lyrics and songs basically it still maintained the dark tone of exile but it's just the sound was just all over the place like and then another thing too is like mm -hmm. it's always the chemistry that always bugs me about this album because it's like around this time Mick Jagger was really becoming like very popular and stuff like that and you know he was achieving a celebrity status and he you know he wanted to you know he, you know like when a certain artist really achieves that celebrity status and stuff like that and then they try to like do some stuff in the studio sometimes they get so focused in that that their head is not in the right place and stuff like that that's it's not exactly what I'm trying to say with the Rolling Stones around this time, but in a similar vein, if you guys get what I'm saying. If you, and so, it's like that chemistry was, wasn't really all the way there, you know, with the tax problems, the plus Keith Richards um, conviction and stuff like that. And then also with this album, it's like, ugh. One thing, one thing that always got me about this album, what was it, what was it, what was it? Okay. So, sorry about that. That's my power came back on. But yeah, one thing about this album that always got to me was just it didn't really unite the Rolling Stones as a unison, and they won't. This is not the only time that they'll have this problem. Like they'll always have this problem and stuff like that. But at the same time, they'll always know they always rebound quickly and shit, if you know what I mean. And it's like energy, I just felt like that was just a Mick Jagger solo song. And I felt like coming down again was just a Keith Richards solo song. And I know what y'all thinking. Uh what what do you mean by that? Because like if you literally listen to Happy and stuff like that by in the exile on Main Street. Although it was a Keith Richards solo track, like it still felt like Rolling Stones, especially when Mick Jagger gets on the background vocals. But with this album, I don't know. It's just that it didn't, in my opinion, it didn't really provide them as a united front. And I know I'm not trying to bag on this album and stuff like that. I'm not trying to like really, and I don't really like to compare it to Exile on Main Street. But at the same time, it's just like. Hmm. Hell. It's just like... I would say that this album was really like... The first time... When both Mick and Keith would argue really... Have like a divided about which sound they want on the album. And this would not be the last time. And stuff like that. Now a positive point I would say... I do feel that... Mick Taylor still did his, is doing his thing when it came to this album and stuff like that. And the next album is only rock and roll would be his last album and shit. So, and also I felt, I de definitely I felt like I'm, I'm definitely going to praise the versatility and shit like that. So, yeah. But other than that, this album, although I've talked a lot of shit about this album, it's surprise. It's not their worst, but it's not their best. It's like in the middle and shit like that. So yeah, and like I said before, I don't have um. I already read the albums I have, except for Voodoo Lane, Voodoo Lounge and stuff like that. But I'm not really looking to review that album at them at this time. Because I want to see if I can get some more Rolling Stones albums. And, but if I do get some girls, I'm definitely going to review it and shit like that. So, 
Yeah, I'm gonna wait till like actually get that album to review it. But this is your boy. Peace.